Jesse Thorne, creator of The Sound of Young America. You uh, might recognize him from his podcast, or you might also recognize him from the IFC show that you used to host, um, and uh, called The Grid TV. That's right? unlikely. <laughs> and why were we playing that song? Uh, that's my power jam. <laughs> this power jam. And I found that out because, okay, you've never lived in Florida, right? That's true. And last night, he had about 25 of perfect, perfectly good strangers bringing you great gifts for your new baby. He's a new dad. And he's such, a, he is such a devout following of podcast followers that he, um, he throws one hell of a meetup. So we are... Um, able to, he was able to talk to his adoring fans, and uh, they, I'm sure, are following along today, both of those are, who are in the room and are also following online. So um, I'll let you get out of the way, but, or I'll get out of the, your way so you can give your talk, but help us finish the sentence. The future of journalism is? Like tennis. Like tennis. I'll tell you why it's like tennis. I know I'm not supposed to keep going. I once interviewed. And I will trade you. Sure. And I will grab your name tag. I once interviewed uh, Steve Albini for my public radio show, The Sound of Young America. If you don't know who he is, he's a sort of legendary rock and roll producer. And I asked him what the future of the music industry was. And he told me it was like tennis, and I asked him what that meant, and he said, well, lots, of police, uh, lots and lots of people play tennis, probably more people every day, but most of them don't expect to make a living at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> However, I assume that the people in this room are here because they are practicing journalists and they want to make a living at what they do. I know as someone who did my show for a number of years while I was working as a part-time receptionist at a nonprofit, that that is not the only reason why you do it, but I also know that I've been able to do much more since I started making money. So I wanted to focus on one specific element of how I've made money doing my work. That's, I, I also uh, make a uh, menswear blog, make. I write a menswear blog and host a web series about menswear called Put This On. And we've funded each season of our uh, menswear blog's web series uh, through Kickstarter. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how you can use crowdfunding to fund your journalistic endeavors. First, I wanted to thank the Pointer Institute for having me here. I'm not trying to brag, but they put me up at the Hampton Inn and Suites. Um, I'd also like to thank them for their commitment to the hybridization of, uh, of conferences. Um, I never knew that conferences could have sex, much less have babies. Um, and I figured as long as I was thanking things, I probably ought to thank the state of Florida for oranges and Don Johnson and all the other Florida stuff I could think of. Um, as I said, I, I'm Jesse Thorne. I, I host this public radio show. I uh, distribute this podcast network. I uh, do this blog about menswear. Um, I am award-winning and a, a certified social media influencer. Now I know what you're thinking. Jesse, can you prove that you're award-winning? Yes, number one. When I was student body president of my high school, I received an award. It was a combination of a plaque and a gavel that I still have to this day in case I need to do any emergency calling to order. I'm also a social media influencer. I Facebooked about a Barack Obama in 2007, and you can see where that dude is now. Ah, but you're here to learn. You are here to learn. I'm going to teach you something complex but also simple, sort of like Go or the Hollow Note song, Rich Girl. Um, something, something that strikes you uh, and moves you, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it will be something you can grasp easily, but will change your life dramatically. Um, the good news is that when it comes to crowdsourcing, I have a can't-miss strategy that works every time, absolutely 1,000% without fail. It has been field tested. I have used it over twice. Um, and I believe that it is as impregnable as a double hulled uh, steamer ship. Um, but you don't have to take my word for it, as celebrity half man, half robot LeVar Burton says. <laughs> I also offer an ironclad money back guarantee. If you are unsatisfied with the results of this talk, you can send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I will send you $1 cash money US. That's a money back guarantee. It's actually a more than money back guarantee because you haven't actually paid me anything. Unfortunately, I don't think so. 
Am I not? Yeah. It's kind of a bummer, actually. Um, for those of you who don't know, how many of you are already familiar with how Kickstarter and other crowdfunding websites work? Okay. So basically what they are is platforms for raising money for specific projects. Um, they are, in some cases, well designed, some cases poorly designed. The industry leader is definitely a website called Kickstarter, but there are other options as well. They vary in various slight ways. Hopefully one of them will charge creators less money soon. Um, I, am, I have used Kickstarter because it is the leader, not because I work for Kickstarter or think that they're, uh, there's the, they're the best option for me so far, but like I said, I've got my quibbles. So let's talk about how you create something for Kickstarter that will actually raise some money. First of all, you have to make it discreet. These are websites that like capital fundraising, which any nonprofit fundraiser will tell you is the easiest kind of money to raise. It is money that goes to a specific project, whether that's making an album or in my case, making a season of a web series or whatever, it has to be something that people can understand the beginning, middle, and end of, something where there is a product at the end. It cannot be what they call operating funds, which is to say that you can use, it is much, it will be much more effective for you to use Kickstarter to raise money to build a community center than to hire the staff for a community center. You also have to make it remarkable. This goes back to an idea we heard about earlier. That is, it has to be something that is cool. In whatever way, it has to be something that someone might want to tell their friend about, someone might want to get excited about. And that's because all of us are conditioned to not tell people about things and especially not get up off of money that we don't have to get up off of. The hardest money to raise is the first dollar. It's a lot easier to take someone from one dollar to a thousand dollars than it is to take someone from zero dollars to one dollar. That's why Amnesty International sends those people with clipboards out on the street to get you to donate five dollars so they can send you mailers after that. You also have to set a real goal. This is a mistake that I see so many people making. They ask for an amount of money that is either silly big or much more often actually silly small. If you're asking for $10,000 to complete your feature film, that what's going to happen is you're going to raise that $10,000 and then you're not going to be able to deliver. So what I learned in the course of my three rounds of funding for Put This On, which were, if you're keeping track, $1,500, $15,000, and $68,000, was that if I wanted to make a real living, I had to ask for a real amount of money. And if I wanted to make something that was real, I had to have money to make it. You also have to not stretch out too long. People think the more time I have to raise money, the more likely I am to raise money. The reality is that the greatest thing that will be driving your fundraising is having the wind at your back, constantly moving forward, telling a story that keeps developing. And if that stalls out, if you hit $15,000 and your goal is $100,000 and you're having a hard time getting to $17,000, you're going to have a hard time continuing along the path to $100,000. And one of the ways that you can make it always feel like it's moving forward, make people always feel like they're getting you towards the goal, is to compress the timeline. So when I've done these, uh, I have usually raised money in a week, two weeks, a month, maybe at the long end. People tend to do six months or something like that. And look, that's great if you're trying to you know, build a new wing on the Corcoran or whatever. Um, but online, you want to create something that's exciting in the short term with a sense of immediacy. Again, to get people to that first dollar. You also want to make a great video. Video is the centerpiece of these websites. And that's the great innovation. And a great video doesn't have to be a fancy video. Um, it just has to be a compelling video. I mean, we saw videos, or at least examples of videos earlier, that are incredibly compelling without being fancy. Um, I'll, I'll tell you that when we, uh, when, we shot, uh, when we shot the video for season two of Put This On, after completing season one, um, uh, my uh, shooter, Ben, and I, we went out to uh, the big Deco train station in downtown Los Angeles, Union Station, beautiful place. We shot, we wrote this great script, we shot this video, and then we realized that the audio was blown out. And so then we were like, uh, and Ben by that time had flown back to New York City. And I'm not really any good at operating cameras. So uh, we were like, shit, what are we gonna do? Excuse me, we were like, heck, what are we gonna do? <laughs> um, I just swore so much at a public radio conference like three weeks ago, I don't think I'm ever gonna be invited to any public radio parties again. <laughs> I'm never again am I going to Terry, Gross Terry Gross's house to eat. Um, but we were out of luck, right? We had nothing, essentially. 
What we did was I recorded into a microphone uh, a narration for this thing. It was much better than what I had written for video because I could remember all of it and I could just read it off of a piece of paper. That's radio skills for you. And uh, we put it together with like some silly graphics and some B-roll from the last season and uh, it was dramatically better than what we had shot in this beautiful location that we had scheduled a day of shooting and brought Ben out from New York to shoot. Um, it, you also have to create prizes for these things, these sort of thank you gifts. Um, these have to have value, but I think that a lot of people get confused and think that that value has to be monetary value. People think that they are selling something. And you are selling something, but what you are selling is the product that results from raising this money. So in some cases, those are coincidental. If you're making an album, you can offer people a digital down download of the album uh, if the fundraising goal is met, and that's tremendous. But in my case, you know, I'm going to be offering people in my case, I'm offering people this season of my show, right? And everyone's going to get that for free as long as I raise this money. And so people don't necessarily want to give their money for that. So what we do is offer incorporal uh, uh, benefits. You can get producer credits on our shows. Um, if people gave, uh, no one did this, but we did offer for $15,000, I think, I would fly to wherever you live and take you shopping for a day. Um, but, and that's something that we didn't expect to anyone to pick up, but we wanted people to just think it was cool, basically. And uh, essentially, you have a lot of stuff that your audience already thinks is cool. That's why they are your audience. And it doesn't have to be uh, mugs. And you also don't have to give things out at market rate. You, know? you have to understand that since that first dollar is the most important, this is just like a cool thing that they can only get this way. And that's why people pledge to public radio stations uh, to get a tote bag when they could just buy a tote bag for $10. It's the combination of getting a special thing that you can only get that way and the feeling that you're doing something good. You're supporting something that you want to support in doing that. Um, now I want to talk about the actual process of, of running one of these campaigns, um, hopefully into the not ground. Um, I tried running into the sky. That didn't make sense. Um, you have to connect with two audiences. One is your audience that exists. Um, and hopefully you all are building an audience. Um, and that can be a personal audience. It can be an audience for a brand that you own. It can be an audience for a company that you work for. But hopefully you have some group of people. It could even just be your family and friends who are engaged and care about what you're doing. And you should try and grow that as best as you can. You're also going to want to try and connect to new people who might be interested in what you're doing. So if you are making a documentary, I, I uh, met this guy who's making a documentary about Italian tailoring, which is a subject that I'm interested in, called Omast. He has this whole audience, not just of people who know about him and his documentary films, but also people who are invested in the idea of having a documentary about Italian tailoring. So it's his job to connect both with the people who he knows and know about him and the people who might be interested in this thing that he is working on. You have to ask for the money. You're not asking for a handout when you're making something. You are asking people to allow you to make something that they want. They will not give you the money if they don't want the thing. You are, it, is, it is a transaction. It is, a, a, it is money exchanged for a service. It is not money given to a charity that you never see again. You are not asking. You are not, at, you are not a pity case. You are not a panhandler. What you are is saying, if you support me in this way, I will make this thing that you want. And if you don't want this thing, you don't have to support it. And if not enough people support it, I won't make it. It's that simple. You don't have to feel bad about this. And I know there's a couple people in public media here. I think if you're in public media, you feel more comfortable with that. But it's something that you should get comfortable with if you want to do this. Because if you are apologetic about asking for money to make something, well, then you're going to be making something for no money. <laughs> you're all journalists, so I'm sure that you have great control over storytelling. Um, as this process goes on, you want to tell a narrative of what's happening. You want to create a narrative about getting to your goal and getting to make this thing. That means updates, you know, new videos, webcam videos, Twitter feeds, everything that you do. If, you, if you're lucky enough 
to live in a place where there's a great public radio station, you can hear how they make their pledge drive a story. They, they do, usually do kind of a C plus, B minus job at that, frankly. If you see a great, uh, great, fundraising, a great fundraising outfit, even, even at a school, even a great principal who's raising money to build a library knows how to make a, make a continuing, growing, developing story that people want to be part of. You know, they want to be part of the team that brought this thing together. They want to know that when this thing comes out, they were part of what made it possible. You also have to create news. And this is especially if you're trying to raise a lot of money or over a long timeline. You have to have points, flash points, that excite people and keep people engaged. Um, that can be anything. I mean, it could be announcing a new silly prize. You know, if, if I announce that for, if somebody wants to pay $50,000, I will give them my wardrobe, for example. Um, that's something that people will get a kick out of. It will re-engage them in the whole process. You also have to be prepared to walk away. This is a hard one. When I did f season one to put this on, I was thinking about doing season two. We had a lot of viewers in season one, and I was thinking I should just do this thing through advertising. I started talking to advertisers, and it's probably like this in the rest of the internet, but in fashion, advertisers just want you to secretly do branded content. Sorry to say that out loud, but we were willing to create commercials for people, but we weren't willing to sneak their stuff into our show. It, we weren't, weren't willing to include their clients in our editorial. So I bagged that idea. And I thought, I'm going to do this, and if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. We're going to need to raise a lot of money in order to do it right, because I have a real job, you know, run this podcasting network. I love doing this, but I wanted the real money if I was going to do this, because I need to pay people and stuff. So what's important is that you are willing to, if it comes to it, say, OK, you didn't want to pay for this thing? Then it's not going to happen. Because otherwise, you have no credibility. Otherwise, there's no urgency to create this. Because the reason people are giving, even though they're going to get something at the end one way or the other, is because they want to make sure it happens. right? And if they know that it's going to happen one way or the other, because you're soft peddling the fact that you won't do it if you don't get the money, they're not going to give. And finally, you just collect the money and laugh maniacally. I don't know if you guys have a money pit, but if you don't have a money pit, you should get one. They're tremendous. <laughs> Uh, it's a great place for swimming, and just it's just really, really a great place to hang out. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this, I understand. You know, I, I can't take questions. You're welcome to email me uh, at jesse at maximumfund.org. And if you have any uh, complaints or concerns, send them to president at whitehouse.gov. Um, and uh, just a, a final closing thought: um, always remember that every great presentation ends with an inspirational thought. <laughs> Thanks.